Hello, y'all. Hello. Oh, y'all been trying to get this to go live on YouTube or Facebook and it is not working. And so I am going to just record this via Zoom and then upload it to everything else later. That's what I am going to do so we can get this thing up and running, y'all. I'm super excited. So if you miss Life Group, um on the 2nd of October. Are we in October? Yes, we're in October. If you missed Life Group on October 2nd, it was this past Sunday. I promise because it was so quick, it's usually like an hour and a half, two hours. Um, but because um, I didn't go through all of my notes and all of the details. Um, and so I decided to record the full message for later so for those who missed it for those who came late due to the time difference this is me recording the entire message for life group because I do believe the entire message is important um depending on who you are of course um always make sure you're listening with a prophetic ear um and all of those things so you can you know discern if this is for you or if it isn't um what parts to take from what parts to pull from and apply it to your life. And so here we are. Um, it's the Unveiling Women's Life Group. This graphic just so happens to be for my ministry and the podcast, but we are here at the Unveiling Women's Life Group. I'm recording this as a podcast in a sense because I'm going to upload it as, my, as a podcast as well for those of you all who listen to the podcast. And then I'm going to upload this part as a YouTube video, and I'm going to also put it on the Ebony D. James page on Facebook. And so if you have not met me yet, my name is Ebony James. I'm not on camera. I don't even know how to get on camera and share my screen and record and all of that at the same time. So I have this presentation prepared because I was going to do all of the shebangs on StreamYard, but StreamYard wouldn't let me upload. So without further ado and all the technical difficulties, this is what we have prepared. This is what I have for you all today. I want to welcome you all to, um, for those who are listening for the first time, for those who missed the life group and are coming on now, um, if you don't know, I've been doing the Unveiling Women's Life Group for the, on the second of each month, no matter what day it is. It's at 7.22 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And so if you're joining me for the first time, I'm Ebony D. James. I am a follower of the Most High God. I am a daughter of the King. And um, I hold so many titles, but um, that is my main title. And then after that, I'm also a wife. I've been a wife for seven years, plus a few months. And I am the mommy to two little ones. I decided to start the Unveiling Women's Life Group because I was having um, different conversations with different women, single, married, um, those with children and without. And a thing that I kept hearing recurring often was relationships and community with other women who are on fire for God. And you know what I'm saying? Like you didn't have to pay for it. You just get to come into this community and just be, right? And so I wanted to be super intentional about connecting with women um, in this year, in this season. And I was asking God like, Lord, where are the places that we can go and connect with women? You know what I'm saying? Who are on fire for God, who can literally, you know, sharpen us and, you know, iron sharpen iron, all of those things. And, you know, God just began to show me like, no, you can be an answer to the prayer, right? A lot of times we're praying for stuff when we're the answer to the prayers that we're praying. And we have a responsibility or an assignment to literally put certain things in place or to hold certain spaces, Right. And so I felt like God called me to the life group. And so I decided to do the life group. We do it once a month. So there's no pressure to, you know, come every single week and all of the things, um, you know, especially if we're mom, moms or in wives, you know, or, you know, career women, if we're single, all of the things. So just to wrap this up, I wanted to be intentional about connecting with women who want to ultimately grow deeper in their intimacy with God, 
who wanted to connect with the group of women who are unashamed and on fire for God, um, who wanted to break free from anything that was holding them back in, in their current seasons of life, right? Those who wanted to walk, who want to walk boldly and confidently in who God has called them to be. And ultimately women who want to fearlessly and strategically walk into their God-given purpose. Um, God has called me to support women in that way. And so I wanted to be intentional about creating a safe space for women to do just that, right? And so the life group aim is to help women around the world break free from limiting beliefs and unhealthy mindset, to dismantle condemnation, shame, and guilt, um, to rediscover their identity as a daughter of Jesus Christ, the son of God, um, to help women around the world stand on the promises of God for their lives, to recover everything that the enemy has stolen from them, and then ultimately get their voice back, right? So if you listen to the podcast, that's why my podcast is called Girl, Get Your Voice Back, because we're coming for everything, especially our voice, right? Um, and so let's open up in prayer, and we're going to hop on in. Disclaimer, I live in a construction zone. If you listen to my podcast, I've said that so many times because I still do, Right. Um, all year where I stay at, there's been construction going on. And so if you hear noises and all kinds of tapping or whatever, I'm home alone, but it's construction. Okay. And so let's pray and get into this. Um, Father God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for um, the word that you have given me. God, I thank you, Lord, that you are drawing women to this podcast so that they can grow deeper in intimacy with you, that they can be sharpened, oh God, that they can literally break free from every limiting belief, every limiting behavior, limiting actions, oh God. They can break free from anything that has been holding them back from growing deeper in intimacy with you, anything that has been holding them back from being obedient to what you've called them to do, what you've assigned them to do in their life, God. Um, we pray, Lord, that you will just move on this podcast or this whatever recording. God, I pray, Lord, that you will speak to your daughters, God, that you will literally encounter each and every one who is listening under the sound of my voice, who, who have a desire to know you more, who have a desire to grow um, personally, who have a desire to grow in their relationships, those who have a desire to grow in business, those who have a desire to grow and develop spiritually, oh God, those who have been seeking um, spiritual authority and who want to break free from shrinking, those who want to walk boldly and confidently, God, would you encounter them on today? God, would you speak to them on today? today? Would you give them um, clarity, insight, and wisdom? God, would you be, um, would you answer their prayers, God, for those who want to fearlessly and strategically walk into their God-given assignment? God, would you show them, would you reveal to them, Lord, through this message, what it is for them to do, oh God, what their season is supposed to be looking like right now? God, would you give them a piece of the puzzle, even now, God, I, I pray, Lord, that literally they will have a prophetic ear to hear what you have to say to them, oh God, and that you will give them the grace to apply it in the name of Jesus. And so, God, I just pray, Lord, that you will um, empower me, God, that you will speak through me, oh God, in the name of Jesus to deliver this word in power, with boldness and authority, um, and most importantly, with your grace. And so, God, have your way. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. So y'all, I truly believe that this evening is going to be a powerful, well, this not this evening, I'm recording this at 11.36. So this morning is going to be a powerful time. Um, I don't know if you all know what's been going on in the past couple of weeks, but um, on Sunday, September 25th at sundown, um, we entered into a new biblical year, right? We entered into a new biblical year um, in the Jewish community. They call it Rosh Hashanah, right? And so I don't know how many of you are familiar with Rosh Hashanah. If you're watching, feel free to come in. I'll go back and watch the comments and respond and all of those things. Feel free to DM me on Instagram, all of the things. But we entered into a new biblical year or year of the Lord on September, um, yep, September, couple, September the 25th at sundown. And we entered into the year 5783. And that year is um, believed to be the age of creation. 
And so if you're familiar with Rosh Hashanah, you know that it is called um, the head of the year. And of course, 5783 again means the age of creation. So for those who aren't familiar with Rosh Hashanah, not only did we enter into this new biblical year or this new year of the Lord, but we also enter into, well, we are continuing into a decade called pay. A decade called pay, P-E-Y. And so 5783, the decade is 83. One second. The tapping, the tapping, y'all. And so we're in a decade called pay, which represents the 80 of 83, right? And so if you have researched or if you've known anything about Rosh Hashanah or you have studied the Hebrew and all of those things, pay represents the decade of the mouth. It literally translates to the mouth to speak to open. Um, and so that's where 5783, the 83 comes from, right? And so we enter into the decade of the mouth on September 30th, 2019, right? And so we're continuing into this decade of the mouth. And so, of course, this podcast episode or the life group that I recorded on Sunday the 2nd, was um, basically talking about arising and speaking, understanding the times and the seasons that we live in. And so again, the decade of the mouth, we are currently in that. And it means pay, mouth, and opening to speak, right? And so here we have this scripture. Y'all know I love to give y'all the scriptures if you follow the podcast. Matthew 12, verses 34. And it literally says, brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so when we're talking about these scriptures, um, they're all want to be talking about speaking, right? Because we're in a decade of the mouth. We're in a decade of opening our mouth. We're in a decade of speaking. And so here we are in Matthew 12, 34. And Literally, this is Jesus talking. He's like, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the, uh, of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what you, what you feel, what you love is going to show in how you speak to people. It's going to show in what, you, what, are, what you're saying, right? You can also understand people's heart by how they speak to you, what people are saying over you, over your family over your children, over other people, right? And then, of course, we all know Proverbs 18, 21 that says death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit. So these scriptures show how powerful it is not only to check our heart, but also to understand the authority we carry when we open our mouth or how powerful it is to speak and why we should it should not speak or why we should be intentional and mindful of what we have to say. In Proverbs 8, 21, it literally says that death and life are in the tongue. So if you have the power to create to, to, to create death or life by what you say, that's that's a lot of power. So we must be very intentional and be and be very mindful on how we use our words. I just wanted to plug those two scriptures in. You can go back and read the full story, the full chapters on your own time. I wanted to share those so we can be understanding like the connection of our heart and our mouth, the connection of our authority as daughters of the most high God and our tongue, how we speak, what we say, especially in the decade of the mouth because it's so important. And so going back to Rosh Hashanah, right? Last year, we were in the year 5782. And so that started September 7th, 2021, and then ended, of course, September 25th, when sundown we entered into 5783. So still in pay the, the the year, the decade of the mouth. And then so if you break down in in the Hebrew calendar and things like that, 
they their alphabets aren't aren't really like ours, right? And so when you talk about 82, 80 represents pay the decade, and then two goes along with their um alphabet, right? Um, and so two represents bet in the Hebrew. And it represents the house or body, or that's what it means. It translates to the house or body. And so last year, scholars and those who are in the Jewish community um, believe that that was the year to declare God's rest over your house. So you may have known a lot of people between September 7th and September 25th in a season of rest, in a Sabbath year, um, for a lot of people in the Jewish community where they didn't really put in a lot of work and all of that stuff. Um, people were just heavy in rest and sabbaticals. Um, I actually had came off with sabbatical. I feel like God told me to take um, August and September off of work to not receive any. I didn't even, and this was before I knew anything about Rosh Hashanah. Um, I heavily, heavily felt that God was calling me to a sabbatical for those two months, not even knowing the season or the timing, right? Um, so, which is also why it's important to just obey God and make sure you are listening to him and spending time with him, even when you don't understand times and seasons. That's a quick de disclaimer. And so last year was the year to declare his rest over your house, right? Last year was the year to... Um, have your Sabbaths, to have your sabbaticals, to rest, to lean in, to um, really focus in on the word of God, to really listen to what he had to say. And so knowing that about last year, this year, um, we're in 83. So two was, or 82 was for the house, the body declaring his rest, and so now we're in 83, and so we're still in the decade of the mouth. And then the third letter in the Hebrew alphabet is Gamel. And it, re it represents or translates to camel provision or to rise. And so I was watching a video to understand like all of the, the alphabets and the Rosh Hashanah and all of those things. And Literally, the camel back in the day represented it was for us, it would be like the Amazon truck, right? When you see that Amazon truck outside or you get that notification, you're like, okay, you at your door, you check in, you waiting when it say 10 stops away, you prepare, right? You excited to see what you got your stuff in the mail, especially if you always shopping online and you be forgetting what you order. You're like, oh, okay, the Amazon truck coming, right? So that's how the camel was back in the day. It was like that means of transportation that also carried provision. So we know like even when, you know, Jesus was born, all of the gifts and stuff that were brought were brought on the backs of a camel. And so it represents camel provision or to rise. And so when you're coming out of 5782, a, a season or a year of rest, a year of Sabbath, a year of taking sabbaticals and just you know, seeking God's faith. Now we enter into this new year of the Lord where we're supposed to rise up and we're supposed to release, right? What we received in our resting seasons. And so this year has been proclaimed to be the year of abundant provision um, and the year to rise and release God's um, abundant provision. And so when you're thinking about provision, it's not like, oh, I'm just going to get all this money. This is the year for me to receive all of the things. But also the all of the receiving that you've done in your resting season of last year, all of the, the resting that you've been in, all of the stuff that God has poured into you during those times or in this past seasons, now it is the year to rise up and release what you receive right? You have to now rise up and release what you have see, received. And so what does that mean for us? What does that mean for us today? Uh, for those of us who don't even follow the Hebrew calendar and all of those things, right? I believe spiritually, even if we're not intentional, I do believe we need to study these things um, because it, it literally it literally shows what is happening spiritually, right? Whether we know it or not, when I start breaking this down, you will realize like, oh, wow, yeah, all of this stuff was happening right before 
um, 57, 80, right, right before the decade of the math, these were the things that were being highlighted culturally. These were the things that were happening. You know, if you look at the news, if you look at all of the stuff that has been happening, even during the pandemic and all of those things. And so um, I want to talk about what does that mean for us? Because I truly believe that it is a time for us to arise as, as daughters, as a men. If you're listening as a man, it is literally our time to arise in this hour. Um, it's not, we're, I don't believe that we're in a season where we can continue to just sit back and watch and receive from the Lord and keep getting vision and ideas. We've been in decades of just receiving, right? For some of us, it's been like, oh, I've been receiving. I'm, I'm, I'm about to bust, right? You've been receiving for the last 15, 20 years since you started to be a Christian or since you gave your life to Christ. We've been in a season of resting and receiving and not really doing too much. We've been in a season of hiding um, or being hidden, hidden, right? Um, God has hidden a lot of us. And so I do believe that we are in a season or in a decade where we are being called to arise, um, especially in the year 5783. And so um, another thing I think is very uh, a very prophetic action that everyone saw all over the internet streets um, was the, the mantle passing of T.D. Jakes and Sarah Jakes, um, Sarah Jakes Roberts. And I think if you watch that video, everyone has been going crazy on social media about how powerful it was and how it went from woman that art loose to woman evolve. Um, and so I think that also correlates to what I'm talking about when I say arise and speak. Um, cause, cause now we're, we're no longer in these seasons of like, oh, I got to keep um, figuring out how to get free, how to get loose, right? We've been in seasons, a lot of us, and of course, understand like if I'm talking to you, some of you may still be dealing with your healing, may still be getting delivered from some things. And a lot of us still, it's a journey, it's a process and we will be doing these things. Um, but I truly believe there's a, a lot of people who we we've, we've done all the deliverance services, we've done self deliverance, we we've, we've been in healing seasons for 5 10 years and now it's like at this point how long are you going to stay there? Right? How long are you going to stay in bondage? How long are you going to stay oppressed? How long will you stay silent? How long will you be in that place? and not arise, right? Not evolve. And so I believe for us, it means that we have to continue in a season of consecration, in a season of holiness, where we're able to hear and discern and lead well during this year and the years to come, right? I believe we are in a season where we must make a fresh commitment to live a lifestyle of prayer and fasting if that's not been our seasons before, right? So for some of us, that means like, hey, continue, continue to endure, continue to persevere and be steadfast in your lifestyle of prayer and fasting, in your lifestyle of communing with the Holy Spirit and being in relationship with other people who can um, help sharpen you and who you can help sharpen. So some of us, we must continue into these lifestyles of consecration and holiness. But for others of us, we need to get back in alignment with living a life of consecration and holiness, right? Which means we need to let go of any of the unfruitful work and habits that we've been doing, um, you know, up until this point, right? Um, and what that looks like for you may be different for what it looks like for me. Um, I truly believe we need to go all in, right, and be fully uncompromised and all of the things, um, making sure we're consecrated in what we listen to, what we look at, what we're putting um, in our bodies and all of those things, um, what we're constantly doing, um, making sure we're protecting our gates, right, our eye gates, our ear gates and all of those things. And so I truly believe like we have to ask God, right? Even those who are listening, ask God to show you what your prayer watch is, right? As you're committing or making a fresh commitment to consecrate yourself, to, to go into a lifestyle of prayer and fasting, truly ask God, what's your prayer watch? And a lot of us don't even know anything about prayer watches. And I have been doing some research and things like that lately on um, prayer watches and literally I remember having a vision 
or a dream. I can't remember if it was a vision or a dream. But um, and God literally showed me what my prayer watch was. And I was like, wow. And it wasn't it wasn't even like a, a surprise moment, because if I think about like over a course of amount of a time, I would always wake up during that time anyway. Right. Naturally, like I wouldn't have to set an alarm. You know, I would just always be up during that time and literally naturally at the very end of that exact watch, I would literally go to sleep. Instantly. Not intentionally. So I believe that if you even ask God to show you what your prayer watch is um, and ask him to give you the grace to be consistent during your watch, to stay up, to watch, to pray, to be consistent in all of that, I truly believe that he will not only show you um, your assignment for watching and praying and consecrating yourselves and living a lifestyle of prayer and fasting, but also I believe he will give you the grace to um, stay up, to be consistent, to pray and to watch during those times. And so ask him for the grace, even to fast regularly. I know a lot of times for us, fasting can be hard, right? Or you like, oh, God ain't telling me to fast or whatever the case may be. Um, but I truly believe like in the benefits of fasting, not like in the in science tells us there's benefits of fasting. We can look in the Bible and see all of the benefits of fasting. Um, and and when we get a revelation of the importance and the benefits of fasting regularly, I believe it'll the grace will just you know we'll be able to tap into to fast to um and the grace to fast. And so yes, and as you consecrate yourself, y'all make sure you're setting yourselves apart. If 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 we are looking at you and we can't tell like if they living in the world or if they you know what I'm saying like. People should be able to tell, like, oh no, that's the daughter of the king, right? As they're even as they're looking at you, right? Like, we shouldn't be trying to figure out, like, are they even saved? Should I even be connecting to this person? Because I don't know, like, sometimes they doing this and sometimes they doing that, right? And when we're consecrating ourselves, we have to put ourselves, or you know, put ourselves in a standard or commit to living us at a higher standard. That's what I'm looking for. We have to commit to living at a higher standard than everyone else. We have to make sure that we're set apart, that we're being distinguished among the world, right? That way you will begin to hear him more clear. You'll be able to literally um, begin to see and hear the things that he want to reveal to you as it concerns what you should be doing, where you should be going, what you should be speaking during the decade of the mouth, right? For many of us, he has already been revealing our assignments to us. He's already been revealing our people to us. He's already been revealing a, th a lot of things to us for quite some time. He's given us the witty ideas that we've been praying for. He's given us um, the gifts and the talents and the grace to do certain things. And now we're in a season where it's like, Okay, he's given us all of these things. How long are you going to keep asking for more clarity? How long are you going to keep asking for um, more support, more resources? How long are we going to keep asking for when and all of these things? Now we're in a season where we just have to obey. Obey with what you already have, right? Whether that's concerning the resources, the idea, just go ahead and start to obey now. Say yes now. And so many people may be like, okay, well, okay, this is the decade of the mouth, but what am I supposed to be talking about? What should I be speaking? What should I be saying? And the first thing you want to do is make sure you're in the word of God, because if you're in the word of God, you can always speak the word of God. What, you're, what God is speaking to you as you are in your word, then you can go because you have a revelation now, because you have an understanding, because you've been tested and tried in that word. Now you can go and literally speak that word to others. You can go and proclaim the gospel, right, to others. You, you want to speak and point people to Jesus ultimately, whether that's through preaching the gospel, whether that's through sharing your story or your testimony, your goal is to point people to Jesus. Your goal is to prepare the way of the Lord, right? And then for some people, maybe you feel like, well, I don't have a testimony, which I beg to differ. Um, 
for you, it may start off, maybe a guy has given you a gift to um, exhort and to encourage people. So maybe for you, it may start off com- complimenting people when you see them. You know what I'm saying? To brighten up their day. For you, it may be just encouraging people who who may be going through a grieving season, who may be um, feeling depressed, those who may be feeling like they are burning out, for those who may be feeling like they can't take it anymore. Maybe for you, what you're speaking is a word of encouragement. Just make sure you're speaking what he tells you to speak, what he tells you to share and to whom he's telling you to speak it to, right? I believe last year, well, I don't believe I know. Last year, the Lord began to speak to me so clearly. And he was saying, what you speak, you will see. What you speak, you will see. And ultimately, um, it was just the beginnings of him basically making sure that I'm being mindful and intentional about the words that I was saying and about the authority that I carry as a daughter, right? So as you begin to understand your identity in Christ, the Lord will begin to show you other things, areas that you need to improve on, things that you need to be mindful and intentional about. And one of the things that um, even today I'm encouraging you all is to be mindful and intentional about the things that you say. But not only what you're saying, but also what other people are saying to you, what they're saying over you, what they're saying over your children, over your destiny, over your marriage, over your spouse, over over your business. Be very mindful. Be very intentional on what you're saying and what other people are saying. Because what you speak, you will see. That's what the Lord kept saying to me last year. And after that, he began me on a journey of literally being mindful and intentional of all the words that I have been spoke that I have been speaking. You know, I would be saying stuff and I re- instantly remember like, oh my goodness, no, I come out of agreement with it. I repent for saying it. No, I don't even receive that word that I just said, you know, or people will be talking and, you know, just normal because we haven't been trained in this growing up. So we're, we literally have to break off a lot of um, error teaching that we've learned. Um, We have to let go of some of our ways that we've been doing, you know, I grew up in Memphis and Memphis is known for like checking some, some people call it zoning. And I don't know what everybody else call it, but in Memphis, we call it checking. And so we, I grew up in a city where we weren't mindful, right, of the words that we were speaking because it was like, oh, that's the thing to do in Memphis. You better learn how to check or you're going to be disappointed in school, right? You better learn how to check or you're going to be embarrassed if you ain't got no comeback, right? You better learn how to check. This is what we were raised to, you know, know. This is how we grew up. And so now growing up, understanding the power of our words, now it's important for you to know, like, no, I come out of agreement of every of every unfruitful word that was spoken. You had to come out of an agreement, even when God began to reveal to you the different things that you said to other people, the things that you said about yourself, you literally have to go back every time he reminds you of something. Oh, I come out of agreement of that. I repent for speaking it over that person. I cast that thought down. All of these things, because what we speak, we will see. And so as he began to reveal those things to me, I had to get more intentional, more intentional. Like even when family members, right? Parents, grandparents, when they're saying things over you or over your children, even when they think they're giving sound advice, even when they think they're being wise and telling you like some important information, even when they're saying certain things, you have to know when to re- um, rebuke a word that has been spoken over your child, over yourself, over your over your life, right? And so I found myself in that season of having to do that. And currently still is. I think it's not something where you arrive. You have to be intentional of everywhere it's spoken, you know? And and you have to make that something like a lifestyle, right? Because the power of words, the power of words, it literally says death and life is in the power of your words, is in the power of the tongue. And so um, I also believe that's why it's super important to make sure you're speaking biblical declarations um, and powerful prayers and make sure you're sharing powerful prayers each day. 
So let me tell you, y'all, your words will come to pass. If you don't believe, because some of y'all don't even believe, like, oh, it ain't that important. It ain't that deep. Um, Some of y'all don't even believe that your words are that powerful. Even though the scripture tells us that death and life is in the power of the tongue. Even though scripture tells us that out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speak. A lot of us don't even believe that our words will come to pass. Right? So be careful. If you don't believe, be careful. Some of us need to come out of agreement for some words we've spoken in anger, words we've spoken in weariness, words we've spoken in our low moments, words we've spoken um, when we were jealous, words we've spoken when we were um, upset and afraid and all of these things. A lot of us need to be like, Lord, I, I come out of agreement with every word I've spoken while I've been angry. I, because out of the abundance of your heart, if your heart, if you're angry, if you're weary, if you're tired, if you're an exhausted mom, right? If you've been struggling with certain things, if you feel some type of way, out, out of the abundance of those feelings, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. And so you will say something that you don't even mean because you're angry. Somebody um, made you mad and now you got to say something to them to try to make them mad. And now you need to come out of agreement. No, I come out of agreement, even with the words that you've spoken over other people. Because a lot of times we only come out of agreement with the words that we said about ourselves. Oh, I'm too fat. I'm too ugly. I'm this, I'm that, I'm that, right? And we come out of agreement with that, those words. But a lot of times we don't come out of agreement with the words that we said over other people, right? And so these are called word curses, y'all. We have to break off word curses. The word curses that were spoken intentionally to cause hurt and pain to other people who have hurt and caused us pain. We have to break off word curses that people have spoken unintentionally and that we have spoken unintentionally because of a lack of knowledge, a lack of revelation of the power of our words and the power of our tongue, right? We have to break the, cur the curses. We have to come out of agreement with the word curses. A lot, I, I tell um, Darius all the time, like when he's on the phone with people and they're talking and he's like, mm-hmm, or nodding his head. Because a lot of times we've been taught to nod our head when people are talking because it's telling us like, yeah, I hear you, whatever. But, you know, when we nod our head, that means yes. And it means agreement, right? And so, like, I have to even remind us all the time, like when we're even just having a regular conversation with people. If someone is talking to us about something, I'm like, uh-uh, don't say, mm-hmm. Don't say yes. Don't nod your head yes to show them that you're paying attention. Because for me, when I say intentional, I, I mean intentional about every word that is being spoken to me, over me, over my family, over my children, over my marriage, over my finances, over my destiny, over my business, over my ministry, over my leaders, over my church, over my friends. Listen, every word spoken, like you can't just come to me and say anything. Why? Because I understand the power of words. That's why you can't be listening to gossip or entertaining gossip or gossiping yourself. And so we're in a season of continuing to, or, or if you haven't already, going into heavy consecration, going into a lifestyle of prayer and fasting so that you can hear what God is telling you um, and then also be able to speak. Because what you speak, you will see. And I truly believe that as we're in the decade of the mouth, it is time. It is truly time. As we're in the year of the Lord, where it's time for us to rise and release what God has been pouring into us, that means it's time for us to speak. It's time for us to testify. It's time for us to um, teach. Teach what you have learned, right? You need to be praying into the revelations that you've been getting. You need to be praying into the words that you, when you have a revelation of something, why would you want to hold that in on your own? Only for your, yourself and maybe your spouse and your children if you're married with children. You need to be one, oh no, oh God has given me this word. It's like, it's like fire shut up in my bones. I need to release this. That's when I find myself in my word like crazy, I always have a word that's like fire shit up in my bones. We got to pray. We got to evangelize. We have to decree and declare the word of the Lord. And if, if, if you have a gift to prophesy, you need to be prophesying. What has God shown you that he's told you to release to other people? 
right? When you're in a season of consecration, where you're living a lifestyle of holiness, God will literally begin to reveal to you some things. You just have to understand what time and season you're in so that you can know what that God is actually showing you something so that you can release and warn the people. Listen, will you be bold to reveal your truth like Esther? Will you be bold like her? She said, listen, if I perish, I perish. If I perish, I perish. A lot of us, we're worried about losing our jobs. A lot of us worried about losing friends. A lot of us worried about losing, losing likes and followers. And Esther was like, if I perish, I perish at this point. Listen, there were many great men and women of God who were called and were afraid. Which tells me that there's going to be a lot of assignments that God is releasing to his daughters, that he's releasing to his sons, that when he tell us what we're supposed to do, we're going to immediately be afraid. We're going to immediately have an excuse to why we shouldn't be the ones to call to do it, why we shouldn't be the ones who should um, have to do that. Well, God, it's so many other people who could do this instead. Listen, these men and women of God who we know in the Bible, who everybody talk about, who's in everybody's sermon. Listen, they all had an excuse. Esther said no to Mordecai because she was afraid that she would lose her life. But we'll come back to Esther. What about Moses, right? In Exodus 4, verses 10 through 13, what did Moses say? It says, then Moses said to the Lord, oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither before nor since you have spoken to me, your servant eloquent and then he, this is what he declared over himself he said i am slow of speech and slow of tongue a lot of times we start telling god what we see in the natural about ourselves we we just ignore how high we don't even realize how who we serve but we just start saying oh boy i can't do this because look look i stutter oh i don't like the way my voice sound oh lord I, i'm not educated enough to do that I'm not equipped. I don't have the resources like this person. So, Lord, not me. I don't, I can't do this. And, and listen, so this is what the Lord said to him after he's like, I'm not eloquent enough. I'm slow of speech and slow of tongue. The Lord said to him, who has made man's mouth? He said, or who makes the mute? Who makes the deaf? Who makes the sin or the blind? Have not I the Lord? So a lot of times we're giving God an excuse to why we can't say yes to the assignment. We're giving the God an excuse to why we're disobeying what he's told us to do, what he's told us to say, where he's told us to go. And we're giving him excuses. And he's like, listen, all these excuses of what you're saying, do you not know who you, who you serve? Do you not know who you are? Do you not know who has made man's mouth or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seen, or the blind have not I? Is it not me? So can I not make you eloquent? Can I not make you fast of speech and fast of tongue? You understand what I'm saying? And then I love this because we're going to see this in another person's story too. Even though God is like, listen, do you not know who you're talking to? Do you not know who I am? A lot of us don't know who God is, but then this is his response anyway. After Moses has made all of these excuses, the Lord is saying, now therefore go and I will be with your mouth. He said, listen, I hear your excuses, but um, I ain't taking back what I told you to do. I heard your excuses, but do it anyway. Go anyway. Why? Because I'm going to be with you. He said, I'm going to be with your mouth and I'm going to teach you what you're going to say. And look, then here go Moses. With, but, 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 oh my Lord, please send by the hand of whomever else you may send. He said, after the Lord told him, like, do you know who I am? And when he told him to go anyway, he said, Look, but, but, Lord, just, just send by the hand of whomever else you may send. Just send somebody else, God. Do, do that for, give somebody else that assignment. I'm too afraid. People gonna laugh at me when they hear my voice. People gonna judge me when I start talking. People not gonna listen to me because I don't understand the authority that I have. So I'd rather just not go. I'd rather just not speak. I'd rather just not do it. Do it to somebody else. Let somebody else go. 
this is Moses, y'all. And we know all the miracles and signs and wonders that Moses did. How he literally led the children of Israel out of, out of um, bondage. We know these stories of Moses, but in the beginning of all of that, he was like, no. Imagine if he would have said no, and the Lord would have been like, okay, cool, bet. The folks are going to stay where they at. Imagine. But thank God we serve a faithful God, right? But then let's talk about Jeremiah. Let's talk about Jeremiah. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 6 through 10, what did Jeremiah say when the Lord was calling him? He said, then the word of the Lord came to me, Jeremiah saying, then said I, ah, Lord God, behold. So the Lord, I think I wrote this twice. Let me go and pull it up because I know that ain't what he said. I think I have an error somewhere. So let me pull it up on my phone so I can read the full thing for the people. One second, y'all. Jeremiah 1, verses 6 through 10. And the NKJV says, Then said I, Ah, Lord God. So this first part is wrong. It says, This is Jeremiah talking to the Lord. He says, Behold, I cannot speak. For I am a youth. And he said, this is what the Lord told him. Do not say, right? We got to be mindful of the words we speak in. Even if that's what we see in the natural. Sometimes you can't even say what you see in the natural because the Lord ain't, he like, but you don't know. Y'all don't know what I have pre pre prepared for you. You don't know what I'm going to, how I'm going to use you. Don't even declare and decree out of your mouth what you see in the natural. Y'all, that's something we have to literally, it's, it's a mindset and a habit that we literally have to break. It's a journey because we've been so used to declaring what we see. He said, I can't speak. I'm young. Was he not telling the truth about him being young? He said, I'm a youth. And this is what the Lord said to him. He said, do not say I am a youth. Even though you a youth, don't say you a youth. For you shall go to all to whom I see you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. And then he told him, listen, don't be afraid of their faces. Why? For I am with you to deliver you. So we still got excuses. Come on. How many of us have an excuse right now for why we can't even speak? You, I don't even have a word to say. He said, if you open your mouth, you'll feel it. You, I, don't, I don't have a story. Oh, so God ain't did nothing for you? You ain't got nothing to testify? He ain't brought you out of nothing? Oh, I don't have nothing to teach. You don't? I don't know how to pray. Well, we better get to learning. Oh, I don't, uh, I ain't called to evangelism. Listen, I ain't saying nothing that I ain't said to myself. At some point in my life, I'm not called to prayer. I'm not called to intercession. I'm not called to evangelism. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I'm not called to prophesy. You better ask God for a gift. You may not be called to the office, but you better ask, Lord, give me the gift of prophecy. So that I can proclaim your word to the people. Give me the grace to speak, God. Help me to break every limiting belief and mindset that I have about my own self. Even though this is the truth in the natural, may I not come in agreement with what I see because I know that you can do abundantly and above all that I ask or think, right? He said, listen, stop saying you, you too young for you gonna go to whom I see you and whatever I command you, you will speak. That's why we gotta know how to listen to God. He said, don't be afraid of their faces for I'm with you. So he told Moses that he was with him. He told Jeremiah that he was with him. And then he continues to say to Jeremiah, then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, 
and to throw down, to build and to plant. Listen, when we say to throw down where I'm from, we finna throw down, okay? We, 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 we finna throw down. We about to start jacking, right? This is Jeremiah. This is the Lord talking to Jeremiah. And so since we're all women here, or my life group is particularly for women, let's just go back to Esther because we all know her story. We all know her story, but how many times, how much story do we know, but we don't even apply it to our own lives? So understand what you speak carries an authority to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. Now, what you gonna root out, what you gonna pull down, what you gonna destroy, what you gonna throw down, what you gonna build, and what you gonna plant, that's gonna be up to you. Because death and life is in the power of your tongue. But let's go back to Esther, right? In Esther 4, verse 14, Esther chapter 4, verse 14, Mordecai is talking to Esther. At this point, Esther had already said no. Absolutely not. I'm not doing it. I will not go to the king without him sending for me. Absolutely not. Because listen, by law, if I do this, I'm going to die. This is Esther. She's the queen. Listen, it doesn't matter what title or position you hold in a state, in a city, in your church, in your job. It don't matter. Don't you know we all have excuses? We all have a reason to say no. You gonna always have a reason to say no. This is what Mordecai tells Esther. He said, listen, for if you remain completely silent, the King James Version says, if thou holdest thy peace at this time, at this moment, in the decade of the mouth, if you choose to remain silent, if you choose to hold your peace, if you choose to stay complacent, if you choose to stay comfortable at this time, in this season of your life, when I'm telling you go, Mordecai says relief and deliverance. Relief and deliverance will arise, okay? This is the year to arise. Relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. But listen, you can say no to God. That's cool, right? It ain't cool, but for you, let's say you cool with it. You cool with being disobedient. You cool with saying no to God. You want to be like Moses and be like, just send somebody else. Mordecai said, listen, okay, listen. If you choose to continue to stay silent, if you choose to stay where you are, if you choose to stay a lukewarm Christian, if you choose to stay, stay a compromising Christian, if you choose to want to be in the world and in the church, if you choose to be like that during this time, Relief and deliverance will arise for your people, for your family members, for your unsaved friends, for the people who God has called you to, for your followers on Instagram. He said relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place. God, you are replaceable. We are all replaceable. Don't think that you cannot be replaced. It says it will arise from another place. But guess what? You and your father's house will perish. And then he says, listen, who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Who knows if you have come to your workplace for such a time as this? Listen, if you are an educator at this time, no way can you be silent in the, in the classroom and with all of the stuff they trying to put on our youth, our children, our babies. You be completely silent at this time. When children are, are being exposed to all kinds of wickedness, how can you remain silent when these babies are literally are literally going to prom and then weeks later they're getting killed and not even making it to graduation? How can you remain silent 
When when you teaching children who like, oh, I never listen, y'all. I was in the classroom for five years. I used to have, I used to take my Bibles, it'd be on my desk. Listen, I ain't tolerating nothing. My kids were like, Miss James, can I listen? Nope, you can't listen to that. Not up in my classroom. You can't. Well, I listen to this. Well, you can listen to it at home, but you ain't gonna listen to it up in here. Right. And children, my children love me. Let me tell you. You have to be compromising to, to be a relationship. I used to have children in my classroom. They were like, oh, I don't, I don't I ain't never been to church. My mama doesn't go to church. Oh, well, you want to come with me? Listen, we we we're literally in a classroom of kids who don't know church, they don't know Bible, their parents don't own the Bible, they never seen the Bible. But but we want to be completely silent because we're afraid to lose our job. We're afraid to, to get to called to the principal's office. We're afraid. Why? Because our livelihood is based off of a job. I, oh, if I lose my job, then how I'm going to feed my family? How I'm going to raise my family? How I'm going to keep a roof over our head? Oh, Okay. Because none of that's going to matter. It says, because if you remain completely silent for such a time as this, you and your father's house will perish. And God will raise somebody else up to, to provide relief and deliverance for your classroom, for your children, for your family members, for your friendships, for those who you've been called to impact. But maybe you in that classroom for such a time as this. Maybe you're in that school for such a time as this. Maybe you on that job for such a, a time as this. Maybe you on that assembly line working. Maybe you a Uber driver for such a time as this. Do you know? For those of you like, I ain't called to evangelism. If you a Uber driver, you know how many people who get to come into your in your vehicle. You know how many opportunities that is that you said no to. Listen. We have to understand why God has put us in certain positions. We need to understand why we've been called to certain environments. Listen, this, this is, we got to understand how we silent and, and our siblings going to hell. How? How? Have we lost all of our compassion? Have we lost all of our zeal? See, when we don't understand the times and the seasons, we make excuses to why we aren't worthy enough, why we aren't equipped enough, why we have to delay and procrastinate, why we don't say no. May you not be the one who missed the Kairos moment. May you not be the one who missed the time that you have been sent to arise and to speak. May you not miss what God is doing in your life in the seasons of your life, you need to be praying like, Lord, no. I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask for the Issachar anointing. I want to understand times and seasons. I want to be obedient. I want to know when God is calling me to a place. I don't want to be spiritually blind to the point where God has put me in an environment. He's put me in an apartment complex. He's put me in a condo. He's put me in a community. Lord, why are you calling me here? We need to be at, Lord, okay, I'm here. I'm in this, I'm in Frazier. I'm in Raleigh, I'm in Cordova, I'm in Atlanta, I'm in all of these different places. Okay, God, why you call me here? Because everything's spiritual, okay? Everything's spiritual. I, 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 we got to be overly spiritual. They be like, oh, you're doing too much. Okay, that's cool. That's cool with me. Because I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss God. I don't want to be so focused on what I see in the natural that I'm not willing and able to say yes when he's calling me to do something. So let's talk about the Issachar anointing. When we talk about understanding times and seasons, let's talk about it. So if you know anything about the sons of Issachar, the Issachar anointing is what we've named the anointing that they had, right? It's that special anointing that has been given to you by the Holy Spirit, which dwells in us all. If you are a, a child of God, you should have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you. Unless you live in a life of sin, then it's going to be gone, right? 
the Issachar anointing is that special anointing from the Holy Spirit that's given to people of God, right? To understand the times and seasons. To understand times and seasons. So it's something that's unique that... For I believe everyone should desire having the Issachar anointing. Everyone should pray and ask God to help you to be understand, to help you to understand times and seasons. You, he might not give you the anointing to understand 100% of the times and seasons, but if you can't pray and ask him, I think God will freely give you the Issachar anointing, right? And so in this anointing of the sons of Issachar, enabled them to understand the times and seasons and because they understood the times and seasons they were able to influence and they were able to lead the children of Israel see we're not trying to just understand times and seasons so we can get the biggest platforms so that we can get promoted so we can do all of these things no it says they were able to literally influence and lead the children children of Israel because they had such an anointing on their life because they had a gift right and this gift helped them to govern their life and to change listen when you understand times and seasons you can literally pray against certain things happening when you have a revelation and you understand like God give you a dream about something if you understand times and seasons, you know that God ain't just give you that dream. So you can, oh, I know. So you can prepare and not tell nobody else. He gave you that anointing to understand the time or season to come so that you can pray against it. So you can rally the people to pray against this event or this situation from happening. Do you know prayer can change? The prayers can override. Can we go back to Esther? Mordecai understood times and seasons. So he was able to give the rebuke to Esther. And when Esther finally got herself together, what did she do? She rallied the people. She was like, okay, okay. Well, we don't, if I perish, I perish. So let's do it. Let's call all the people on the fast. Let's call all the people to consecration and holiness. Let's call all the people to fast and pray. Influence, leadership. Why? Because we need God's divine intervention. We need God's divine favor. We want to go in prayer and turn that situation around. Because a decree has been made over your family. A decree has been made over the children of the world. The, a decree has been made and the enemy does not play fair. But if we choose to remain silent for such a time as this, mercy, mercy, we got to rise up, rally the people to pray so we can shift what we've seen. That's why we need to understand times and seasons because we don't want to be caught off guard. We need to understand times and seasons so when God is telling us to go somewhere and to do something, we can lead the people effectively. We can warn the people. We can tell them, oh God, I see this in my dream. Y'all need to do X, Y, and Z. This is where we go. Imagine if, if, if they want to tell the, the children of Israel to put the, the blood over their doorposts. Somebody had to understand the time and the season. Somebody had to understand the importance of obedience. Somebody had to hear from God. If not, everybody, everybody firstborn would have been snatched. Okay? Listen, the sons of Issachar, they literally understood not only just chronological time, they understood spiritual and political times. You can go read the first Chronicles 12 and read all about them. They understood and were able to discern, right? We need to ask God for the spirit of the, um, the gift of discerning of spirit and discernment, understanding right and wrong. Two different things. The sons of Issachar, they could, uh, they could discern what God was doing and when he was going to do it. Sometimes we know the what, but we don't know the when. Sometimes we know the when, but we don't know the what. That's okay. It's, we, we might not have 100% of, of it, right? It says that they knew when one move of God was ending and when another was beginning. 
They knew when a leader was falling and when another leader was rising up. It says they could even tell you who the next leader should be. And they knew who to follow and when to follow them. A lot of us don't know who to follow or when to follow them. That's why we following anybody and everybody that got followers. Because we don't understand. We don't understand times and seasons. We don't understand spiritual seasons and times. We don't understand political seasons and times. That's why we vote for people we shouldn't be voting for. That's why we committed to a, a, a political party and not God. Because we don't understand spiritual times and seasons. We don't understand political times and seasons. Listen, had it not been for the sons of Issachar, the people didn't know that they would have needed to follow Deborah when it was time for her to rise up, right? At that time, it, it, it didn't even make sense to follow a woman. Let me, let me, let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. Let's just keep knowing. When you're asking for the Issachar anointing, ask God to give you the grace to discern what he's doing, when he's doing it. Ask him to show you when certain moves of God are beginning and when they're ending. Ask him to show you what leaders are falling and rising, not so you can gossip, not so you can see why, so that you can understand who you should be following. A lot of us get, get it wrong and we want to, oh, because of loyalty, because of your false sense of loyalty, I'm only going to follow this person all my life. Some of us have been, have been so loyal to a person or, or, or an environment or a community or an organization. We've been so loyal that we don't even know that God ain't even with this person. We don't even know that God ain't even on this organization. We don't even know that God ain't even in this community no more. Because we've, so, we've become so loyal and we've chosen loyalty to a person, loyalty to man, loyalty to an organization over loyalty to God. Don't you know, Lord, Lord, if, listen, I want to be like the person who said in the Bible, listen, I, I'm only going if you go. Lord, I ain't going unless you're going with me. I ain't following them unless you, unless you with them, Lord. If they not following you, I cannot follow them. So when I talk about understanding times and seasons, when I'm talking about the Issachar anointing, we need to understand certain things so that we can move when God moves. So we can discern who we should be following, who we shouldn't be following. Not based on what the, the stats and the analytics say. And so here's practical examples. Here's some practical examples I've noticed as I was preparing this for a life group on the second. God began to show me examples in my own life and that I didn't even at the time, I didn't even realize that it was it was discerning times and seasons or understanding times and seasons. That's why understanding times and seasons ain't enough. Because if you don't have a revelation or if you're not in a place where you can even understand or you haven't been under people who can teach you and help guide you in certain things, you will have all of the, you will have the dreams, the visions, you will have the word of the Lord, you will have these experiences and don't even know until it's after the fact. And so when I was in high school, y'all, and I'm gonna make these stories super short because they, I can get long with it. So I remember being in high school and if you were in Memphis growing up when I grew up, then the club was the place to be on the weekends. This was after the skating ring wasn't popping no more like that. We were all in club mode, right? So every weekend on Saturday, Sunday, and even sometimes Friday nights, we would be in the club every single day of the weekend. That was the thing to do. And so I remember me and my brother and my friends, all of us, we were at all the parties. Every weekend, we was at a party, okay? And so, we would go to these parties, and I remember this one time, everybody know I'm, I'm, I'm going to the party, but this one time, I was like, nope, I ain't going. My friends would be like, hey, we, we going to the party where we went, you know, the usual. And I'm like, no, I ain't going. I, I don't want to go. And you know, why? Why you don't want to go? And I literally didn't have a good reason or excuse not to want to go, except I just didn't feel like I, sh I should go. 
I literally, it was like this overwhelming uneasiness that I had never felt before, before going to a, a club. And, and I would never forget this day. And it was like, I was just like, no, 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 all the things. And that was my stance. And literally some of my friends ended up leaving before me because they was going anyway, right? With or without me, that's cool. Um, so they went anyway. And I remember at the very last minute, and I believe it was because my high school boyfriend at the time ended up going and he never went to the clubs. And because we went to different high schools, I didn't see him like that. And so um, I didn't see him all the time. And so I think he ended up going because he went, I changed my mind. And so I ended up going to this party late or whatever with my friend. And I was like, okay, I'm going, I'm going to come and scoop you up and listen she stayed far, far away from me and I'm like okay I'm gonna scoop you up literally in a whole nother city I'm gonna come and scoop you up and we gonna go to this party okay boom got to the party everything cool after that party right literally people started it was time to go everybody leaving at the same time club closed everybody leaving and people start shooting in the parking lot and so you hear all these gunshots and everybody running to their car okay but that ain't even the part like Sometimes in Memphis, that's like a norm sometimes, right? Not all the time, but sometimes like we, okay, cool. Sometimes it's even expected. Like we know we go to the club, somebody probably gonna get the fight when they play Nook if you book. We knew these things. And so going to the club, that happened afterwards. But so now we're in the car, we gone. And so it's me, my friend, my boyfriend at the time and his cousin and my friend in the front seat and my boyfriend and his cousin in the back and I'm in my aunt's truck and we're driving on the expressway. There literally ain't no cars on the expressway, y'all. I kid y'all not. We're just driving smooth, gone, almost at her house because I was dropping her out first. And not almost at her house, but like almost on the exit to get to the other expressway to take her to her house. It wasn't far. Long story short, we're talking and you know how people be trying to tell you how to drive and they ain't got no license, they ain't got no car. None of that. They just passenger seat driving. And so she's talking. I'm like, girl, you want to drive? And when I asked her this, this is why you got to watch what you say. When I asked her this, she literally snatched the wheel, y'all. Like a whole child. She snatched the wheel. I'm in a truck. So the truck literally goes on two wheels. I snatched the wheel back. So it can come off the two wheels and I lose control of the truck and we ended up going off the expressway. Off the expressway. And I all I could remember while I was trying to snatch the wheel back was police on the other side. Literally at the exact same moment this is happening, I her snatching the wheel. The police is on the other side and they be and the light come on immediately because they see what's happening. And all I'm thinking is, oh my goodness, I'm gonna get a ticket. They finna call my mama, all the things. And so I literally am trying, like, we're in this like mud on the side, like the ditch. And I'm like trying to get out of it so I can go. Lord, help me. So I'm trying to get out of the ditch because I don't want the police to come and we still over here because then I'm gonna have to explain this whole situation. Lo and behold, long story short, we're on the side, off the expressway, y'all. In the ditch, I'm trying to get out. Police on its way because it, it saw us, it turned on its light. It got to get, get off the exit, come back on, all the things. And um, I guess the end don't matter, but we literally have gone off the expressway. Every The end do matter. And so God preserved each and everybody's life. Nobody was hurt. Nobody, the car wasn't damaged, y'all. Literally no damage. It was just a lot of mud on the tires. Nobody was hurt. God literally preserved each and every one of our lives. There were literally no cars on the expressway. And the only car that was on the other side was the police. And the police guy was so cool. He literally got into the truck and got it off the expressway. He didn't give us a ticket. He told me to put my friend in the back seat. Um, and he literally was making jokes about it. He told me to put her in the back seat, and if I had a car seat, I needed to put her in it. And then he was like, okay, just get home, right? The end of that story, basically. And so, like, only by the grace of God, y'all. And so, I, you know, over time, I realized, like, man, that uneasiness that I was feeling about not going to the club, 
It wasn't because they started shooting afterwards. Yes, God preserved our life. We didn't get hit by no straight bullet or none of that. But the accident, right? God, because God already knows what's going to happen. He already knows. And so just thinking about that, that was one time in my life. And so, because a lot of times we're thinking that, that um, the understanding of times and seasons are going to happen through these, God is going to come through a burning bush or he's going to, sometimes he's going to come through through uneasiness. The Holy Spirit will cause you to feel uneasy, uneasy about something or someone, right? Stuff just don't sit right in your in your heart in your stomach when you're around certain people like you just it's like this feeling that you can't even explain sometimes it'll happen like that or listen sometimes it happens like how it happened to me in second grade i remember being at my mama beauty shop um her and my aunt was working at this beauty shop and you know we was up there like all the time right i used to be up there all during the weekend and all kinds of stuff And so for me, I didn't understand. I'm in second grade and me and my brother are there. And I don't understand why we got to leave and go to my grandma's house. I'm upset. I'm angry that I got to go. And I'm literally is like having a whole moment. Some people would have called it a tantrum. And I'm not a child who throws tantrum. I'm literally chill, really. Um, And you can ask my family. My family, no, I'm really chill, quiet, all that. And so I literally am ho- having a whole tantrum moment, not on the floor rolling around, but like behaving out of the ordinary because I did not want to go with my grandma. I had never, act- I- I'm always with my grandma. I'm literally always over her house. And so I remember having this like huge moment and literally, I kid y'all not, we're leaving. And so eventually like me, I'm, I'm a child. I got to do what my parents. I'm going to do. And so I'm in the car, we driving. My grandma in the front seat, me and my brother in the back seat. And I remember, I remember not even 10 minutes later, y'all. I don't know, because I don't know if I made this up along the way. I don't remember if a car was getting chased by the police or running from the police. I don't remember if a car just sideswiped us or what happened. But all I know is we ended up running into this huge tree. We ended up running into this a huge tree, and um, and so a car accident, right? And we in this tree, and I'm in the back seat, and all I I'm looking at my grandma, and I'm I look at my brother, I'm like, oh my goodness, is she dead? And like I'm looking at my brother, and I'm like, oh my goodness, your forehead, because his forehead has like now become like I can't even like without y'all seeing me, y'all can't even see like how big his forehead had become. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, what is happening? He's like, shut up and all kinds of stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, I knew I didn't want to come. I said I didn't want to come. Right? Like just behaving out of the ordinary. And I was telling a life group like that sometimes, like if you have children, don't automatically assume because naturally or culturally, you will think, oh, they behaving out of the ordinary. Discipline them whoop that tail right that's what some people will make us believe we should do we get embarrassed when our kids are behaving out of the ordinary or if they're tantruming and they're not even a tantrumer and all of that stuff and sometimes they're they're discerning of things it's something may have happened somebody don't sit right in their in 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 their heart in their like they have an uneasiness about a situation or something and we don't even know so sometimes we try to quench the holy spirit in them that's operating in them because sometimes our kids they don't have like the 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 verbal um communication or the expression to be able to literally communicate what they are experiencing or what they feel right and so it may come out as a tantrum and y'all i study behavior i'm literally like classes away from having a whole master's degree in this in this field and so sometimes we assume that their behavior is because they're bad right because they're disobedient you know what I'm saying and sometimes it's literally like for me in second grade I was behaving out of the ordinary and literally something bad happened and to as I was preparing for this message God literally revealed to me and I didn't even I hadn't even thought like I remember this 
story in second grade. I remember the car accident. I remember the, the events leading up to it like never before. And I don't even remember a lot of events back in second grade. Like what? And so, and I'm like, Lord, wow. I didn't even realize that's why I was behaving out of the ordinary. So don't be so quick to write off people's children or your godchildren or your nieces and nephews because they're behaving out of the ordinary. Literally, when I say make sure you're looking at things with a spiritual eye or prophetic eye and listening to things and being having a discerning ear, this is why I mean it. This was me in second grade. And then I remember, because sometimes it's just a feeling of uneasiness. Sometimes it's, it's you or somebody behaving out of the ordinary. And then sometimes it could be a dream. I remember we were living in Atlanta before we, we live in Atlanta now, but before we were living in Memphis, <laughs> okay, when me and my husband got married and we had my first son, we were living in Atlanta, right? Before we were, because we then moved to Memphis right after my son was born, like right before he turned one, we moved to Memphis, okay? When we were in Atlanta, Atlanta, I had a dream that my family was living in Memphis and that we were on a street called James Road, which is in like the Raleigh Frazier area. And I actually lived on this street growing up. My last name is also James. So that's that. And then there were big, so in this dream, there were big military trucks, right? And it was driving throughout like James Road and like the community, right? And the streets were like totally bare, but you had all of these military trucks just driving throughout the community. And this dream, God gave me this dream in 2016, I believe. And then lo and behold, when COVID hit, we were living in Memphis in that same community. We were actually living in Frazier and we were walking distance from James Road. And then, so COVID hit, you know, everything shut down and they had to stay at home orders. People were, you couldn't be outside unless you were, you know, uh, um, what's the word? Unless you were like an um, emergency person, like a nurse or police officer, firefighter, all that stuff. So everybody had to stay home. And I remember watching the news and you saw all these military vehicles driving in, all, in these different communities up north and stuff, enforcing the stay at home order. And even then, I didn't even remember the dream until Darius was like, Ebony, you literally had a dream. And I was like, you're right, I did have a dream. And we was literally living in Memphis in a dream. And so don't think it's strange even when God is giving you dreams of things. Like, don't just take your dreams for granted. We have to literally understand how important our dreams are and make sure and praying like, Lord, encounter me in my dreams, but then also help me to remember my dreams and the details of my dreams and help me to steward them well, not only so I can remember, but so I can write them down and so I can know how to pray, right? And so I think it's so important for us to understand or to ask for the Issachar anointing. And um, I truly believe that we are, in a in a, a a time in an hour where God is literally lifting up His sons and daughters, He's literally promoting His sons and daughters. The ones who have been faithful, the ones who have been seeking Him, the ones who have been preparing right in the season of the Sabbath, in the year of the Sabbath, in your resting season, the ones who haven't just been sitting there comfortable, but the ones who literally have been seeking His face, who have been in His Word. And so, my question to you are, or is. Are you ready to be faithful? Are you ready to obey? If that's you, if he's been positioning you in places and environments and around certain people for such a time as this, are you ready to be faithful? Are you ready to obey? Are you ready to say yes to God? Because like we say, it's not time to stay silent while souls are perishing. People are literally dying. I don't know, God had um, recently um so like I felt like God was leading me to start looking at the headlines I had started randomly doing it because the um Yahoo mail come to my email and so I had been like every day I would just always look at it for some reason I would just look at the headlines and then I felt like I was like yeah pay attention to the headlines not only because sometimes people look at the headlines and it gets overwhelming it's depressing it's like 
it just make you feel some type of way because it's normally bad stuff, right? But I think if we looking at stuff with a prophetic ear, then we know like, oh, we start to notice patterns in certain environments and regions. And it's like, no, 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 this ain't just, this ain't just a, a headline. This is not just a story. This is a principality in the environment. This is something that we need to be strategically praying against, right? So if you're a pastor in a certain city, in a certain environment, if you don't understand what the principality or, or the stronghold in that community or in that environment, go look at the headlines. Go find the patterns. And, and I, I, you will see some of them. Even if you don't see them all, you might see all of them. But make sure you're looking. And so God began to tell me, like, pay attention to the headlines. Pay attention to the headlines. And so you will see that there are people perishing. People are dying. The, the crime rate is not going down at a steady rate, right? So if we know that people are perishing and the Bible tells us that we can be the answer to a whole city, a whole city, a whole people group, relief and deliverance, why wouldn't we say yes? Why we have to be bold and courageous? We have to have the mindset, listen, if I perish, I perish. If I lose my job, I lose my job. If I lose friends, I lose friends. If my family cut me off, my family cut me off. If, 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 if I have to go through a season of lack, I'm just going to have to do that. Right? As long as I'm obedient, it don't matter what my circumstance look like. It don't matter who, it don't matter what people say about me. It don't matter if people stop following me and stop liking my posts. It doesn't matter if people stop sharing. It doesn't matter if people don't purchase my, my, my business services and all of that stuff. None of this stuff matters. But a lot of us, we're so focused on that thing that we're not willing to be obedient. You praying for your job, but you ain't praying for God to, to use you to reach the people who you encounter every single day. Mercy. Listen, no longer can we keep silent. No longer can we continue to be tolerant of evil for the sake of keeping our jobs, for the sake of staying comfortable while others are literally falling as prey and being deceived. Literally, the next generation is being snatched up for the kingdom of darkness. And unless we rise up and speak out in boldness and get some courageousness about ourselves, these people are going to continue to fall away. Why? Because the world getting louder and louder. Compromising lukewarm Christians are getting louder and louder. It's called exposure. The Lord is looking for a bride that he can send, y'all. A bride that he can send. Will we be like Isaiah? He said, also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And Isaiah's response is, here am I, Lord, send me. And then what did he say? Just like he told Moses, just like he told Jeremiah, he said, go and speak, go and tell, arise and speak, y'all, arise and speak. When you start looking at what God is telling these people or how these people are getting their assignments, oftentimes there's an excuse. Oftentimes God is just speaking and always his answer is, go no matter the excuse no matter the circumstances no matter what it looks like go but we want to sit we want to relax we want to chill we want to procrastinate we want to say no his answer is always like go and then usually it's also to speak go and speak go and tell the people keep on hearing but do not understand keep on seeing but do not perceive and i and I believe that's the word of the Lord for today. This is a rhema word. Keep on hearing, but do not understand. And people will perish. Keep on seeing, but don't perceive. Keep acting like you ain't seeing all these killings. Especially if you my follower and you live in Memphis. Y'all don't see? You see, but you don't even understand what's happening. You see, and you still ain't praying for your city every day. All these people. You hearing about all of these news stories, 
and you don't even really understand it. Because if you understood, if you truly had a compassion, if you truly were on fire for God, there's no way we should be having prayer calls and prayer meetings and, and calling fast for the city of Memphis. What? You living in Memphis and there's nothing you want to do. You, how are you playing a part in being a solution to the problem? My God. Because you haven't said, here I am, Lord, send me. And so he's looking for a bride who will say, yes, yes, Lord, here am I, send me. Send me, oh God, use me, oh God. So let's bring this full circle, right? Let's bring this full circle. Esther's immediate response was no, right? She was like, absolutely not. Why? Because of fear. She's looking at the natural. She's looking at the current circumstances. She's looking at the law. Sometimes we will choose to look at the law over looking at God. She knows, like I said before, she knows that you only go into the king's court if you're sent. And if not, there could be grave, deadly consequences. Why? So she's worried. She's worried. She's like, she's fearful. She's worried. She's looking like she's trying to preserve her own life. And then Mordecai gave her the word in Esther 414. And immediately after Mordecai gives her this word, Esther responds, shift. And I, I truly believe that the shift, the shift in her response, it shows the beauty. It literally shows the beauty of the fear of the Lord. It shows the beauty of reverencing God over the fear of man. Come on, because a lot of us, we just afraid of man. We afraid what people going to say. We afraid how people going to respond. We afraid, oh, this person ain't going to like me no more. Oh, this person, oh, they going to they gonna do this. They going to take my position. They going to do this. They going to do that. They going to do that. And it's like, you can continue to fear man, or you can understand the beauty and the importance of the fear of the Lord. And I believe Esther demonstrated this so nicely in her shift in her response. But because yes, she was met with fear. Yes, she was met with a deadly consequence. However, would you be so willing to say, listen, okay, I'm willing to die for, for the Lord. I'm literally willing to die for the gospel. I'm willing to die to be obedient. I'm willing to, to, to suffer persecution. I'm willing for the sake of the gospel. Or are you too afraid? Are you willing to do things afraid? It, she literally shows the beauty of the fear of the Lord. The, also, not just the beauty of the fear of the Lord, because we know Mordecai is the one who gave her the, the word of the Lord. Mordecai gave her the rebuke, right? And so not only does it show the beauty of the fear of the Lord, but it shows the beauty of submitting to leaders in your lives. Leaders who are uncompromising, leaders who fear the Lord, leaders who understand times and seasons. Literally, it shows the beauty of submission. Imagine she's been like, Mordecai, who think you do it, right? Because some of us be like, well, we want to have an attitude. We want to be offended. And so instead of us being beautifully submitted like Esther was to Mordecai and understanding that what he said carry weight, a lot of you, we a lot of y'all serve leaders. And I mean, a lot of people serving leaders, right? You submitted to leaders and you ain't even. You don't even honor. You don't even honor your leaders. That's why they can say something and you can get offended. But there's a beauty in the submission to leaders. There's a beauty. Listen, after Mordecai gives her the rebuke, you see the beauty of the fear of the Lord and the beauty of submission. And it's like a switch flips in her mind, right? It seems like a, a switch literally flips in Esther's mind. And what's her response? Consecration. What's her response? It goes back to, we full circle, goes back to what I said before. Her response is, okay, let's call a fast. Let's call a fast. Let's consecrate ourselves. Let's seek God. Why? Because I need divine favor. Lord, I need, the, I need divine courage. And strength. I don't need just any kind of a courage. I don't need just any kind of a strength. Because this, this, what I'm about to do, is going to take more than my own 
strength, right? It's going to take more than my own will. This will be God or this will be God, period, right? So Esther's like, no, she said literally, yeah, tell the people to fast for me. Not fast for their deliverance, fast for me. Why? Because she was sent. She was the sent one. She was the one who was chosen to arise and speak. She was the one who was positioned for such a time as that. And so she was like, listen, I need favor. I need courage. I need strength. I need, I need some boldness. I need some confidence to do what you are calling me to do. Because right now, all I can see is this excuse. And if I keep looking at the excuse, if I keep looking at my circumstances, if I keep looking at my lack, oh my, if I keep looking at my lack, I'm never going to build up the confidence to do what God has called me to do. If I keep looking at my excuses, if I keep looking at that what's not right about the situation, if I keep looking at what could go wrong about a situation, I'm never going to build up the courage to obey. I'm never going to build up the confidence to be obedient to God. I'm never going to build up the strength to say yes, to say, if I perish, I perish. You need strength for the journey of head. You need zeal for the journey of head. You need courage and boldness. You need God's favor. You need his protection, his provision for your next steps. Okay? So I want to challenge y'all today to say yes again, to rise and to evolve, to obey God, to obey God literally in the midst of fear, in the midst of worry, in the midst of of, of, of sadness in the midst of grief. Sometimes we just got to follow God regardless of what, what, what's happening around us, regardless of all of the distractions. Rise up and speak. Rise up and pray. Rise up and evangelize. Rise up and teach the word of the Lord so that generations and nations may be saved and turned to the Lord. Can God use you? Are you available to be used by God so that your family members can be saved? So that your friends from high school and middle school can be saved? Are you available to be used by God so that the people that you love, the people who you are called to reach are to be saved and turn to the Lord? Listen, everything has its time. Everything has its time. If you go to Ecclesiastes 3 really quickly, it, it literally is talking about how everything has its time. So some of y'all is like, well, you know, the Lord ain't told me to go yet. The Lord ain't rising me up. That's why I said at the very beginning, you got to know if this is for you and if it's not. You need to have a discerning ear and you need to know if you just being fearful and disobedient, if you're procrastinating because of X, Y, and Z. Because you think you got a lot of time. A lot of us say, oh, you know, I got about 10 more years. Oh, I'm just called to, I'm just called to my home. I'm just called to, 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 to teach and raise my children up in the Lord. You only called to your children, but God put you at a, a job. Okay. Ecclesiastes 3. It says to everything, there is a season. So if everything has a season. You need, you need to understand a time and a season for some of those everything. You know what I'm saying? It says a time for every purpose under heaven. Everything has a season. Everything has a time. You better know when is your time. It says in verse 2, Ecclesiastes 3 verse 2, it says a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to fuck what is planted. A time to kill, a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. Come on. We just read Jeremiah. If we go back to the things when we talk about Jeremiah, it says the Lord gave him. He said, I will give you the words to speak. If we go back to this scripture, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms. Why? To root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. So then here we are in Ecclesiastes 3, and we see some of those same things when it concerns times and seasons and the every purpose under heaven. It says a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to be plucked 
to pluck what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Then you get into verse five and it says, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep violent and a time to speak. A lot of us been in, in decades of, of silence, but when we don't ever get to the speak? Understand your excuses, because a lot of us, we still got excuses to why we should stay in a time to keep silent. That's why you got to understand times and seasons so you can know when is your time to keep silent and when is your time to speak. It says there's a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. Go back to Esther 4.14, the King James Version. How long will thy hold thy peace? How long will thy hold thy peace at a time of war? A lot of us, we, we already, the battle is already here and we're still trying to say, oh, oh, it's time for me to hold my peace. The battle is here and we're like, oh, it's time for me to keep silent. The battle is here. And you still trying to heal. It says there's a time to kill and a time to heal. How you still trying to heal in the battle here when you, it's time for you to gird up your loins. Put on your, put on your, um, your, your, we your, your weapons, Gra grab your weapons, put on your armor. How long will you stay silent? How long will you stay comfortable? How long? There's a time to keep silent and there's a time to speak, but how long are you going to stay silent? How long? How long are you going to stay in that classroom and not say nothing? How long are you going to stay on that job and not say nothing? And I'm saying the classroom because I have a lot of people who follow my podcast and listen who are teachers or social workers or are in the education field. And I have a lot of friends because I was in the education field for a while. And so I keep using it. So I'm not talking to anyone specifically, but if the shoe fits, okay? How long will you stay in these environments and stay and hold your peace and stay and keep silent? Understand that there is a season and a time for every purpose. Understand what your season and time is. And, and, and I think it's so crazy because I did this. God gave me this message and I released it on my life group and I didn't even do the full thing. But also my spiritual mom, that same Sunday, she taught a message and I didn't even know. Um, but she taught a message and her message is about, Lord, is it my time? And so um, if you follow um, Jay Lee on Facebook or Converted Church on Facebook, then um, yesterday she actually did a, a lunch hour devotional where she went back through her teaching that she did on Sunday and it's called Lord is my time. And so while I'm talking about this time and understanding your times and seasons, it's important for you all to get the other aspect of it, right? Because for some of y'all, y'all not even ready, right? Let's be real. For some of us, we not even ready. And so you have to know when it is your time. You have to know. That's why I say you have to listen to this with a prophetic ear and with discernment to know. Because a lot of times we get a word and we want to jump on it and it ain't for us. But then also, if it is for you, then don't be like, oh, no, this ain't for me. This not my time. Yes, it is. But anywho, quick plug. Um, Jay Lee, my spiritual mom, Mama Lee is what I call her. She did a live um, on yesterday and it's available on Conversion Church um, Facebook page. And it's also on her Facebook page. Um, I think she shared it. I think I also shared it. So it's also on mine. If you are friends with me over on Facebook, um, make sure you go and listen to her message. It was so powerful. And she literally is talking about, Lord, is it my time? So make sure you go and watch that. I also put the link here if y'all want to. It's easy, so you should be able to um, type that in pretty quickly or just pause the video and then come back. All right, quick plug. And now 
my question for you is how long will you remain silent? I believe that it is not the time to be silent. I think now more than ever is the time to speak. And I say that because we are in a decade of the mouth, right? We are in a decade of the mouth. And if you remain silent during a decade of speaking or the decade of the, it just don't make sense, y'all. Come on. It, it just don't make sense to be silent during a time of the mouth. When the world is getting louder and louder and bolder and bolder, why would the church get quieter and, and, and silent and silent, sir? I know that ain't a word, but it just doesn't make sense, y'all. If you remain silent during this time, it says deliverance, deliverance and relief for the people, for your people, for your family members, for your students, for your unsaved friends, for your generation will arise from another place, but your house will perish. My God. And listen, listen, y'all know me. I, I'm, y'all know me. My whole, one of my assignments is to dismantle condemnation. So please. Do not get offended at this word. If you are offended, it's the devil. This message is not to condemn you. This message is not to curse you. This message is to help you understand the times that we are in. It is year 5783 on the Hebrew calendar. And it literally is the decade of the mouth, the decade to speak. The, we are literally in the new year of rising and releasing. So the goal isn't for this word to make you feel condemned. If you feel in condemnation, it's probably conviction and you, it's, it's probably conviction, okay? This word is to put a fear of the Lord within you. If you haven't had the fear of the Lord, it's to put a fear of the Lord like Esther so that their life switch can, can literally switch on and I'm going to get up out of here, y'all, because it's almost been two hours. But it, this is a good word. And so the question is, we the, not even the question. We've come into a season where we've passed the time of getting ready and preparing. Because a lot of times that's our excuse. Oh, well, you know, I'm still I'm still healing. I'm, God is still dealing with me. He's still speaking to me. He's still preparing me. You've been in the season of getting ready and preparing for 10, 15 years. Don't you know that God can do a thing suddenly and immediately? Where is our faith? Why are we still in seasons of healing? Why should we, why should we be in, in, in seasons of healing for decades and on top of decades, on top of decades? No, God can heal suddenly. We don't know who our God is. We don't know who he is to believe that we must go through decades and decades of literally heal of, of sickness and, and um, needing to be healed. Needing to be prepared. You've been prepared. He's been preparing you for, me, for a month, month and years and decades. You've been silent long enough, sis. We've been receiving long enough. We've been receiving long enough. We've been hidden long enough. How much longer will you prepare for a battle that has already come? The battle, the war is here. The battle is here. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we don't see it, but the battle is here, people. The war has come. It's already here. We can't keep preparing for a battle that's already here. How much longer will we receive the word of the Lord? Will we receive pro pro prophetic word after prophetic word? How much longer will we continue receiving prayer from everybody else and we're not applying? We're not contending for the prophetic word. How much longer will we not apply and contend for what's already been released? God has already released the vision. He's already given us the ideas for businesses, for million dollar businesses, for, for ministries. He's already told us what to do. How much longer will you not obey? How much longer will you not implement? How much longer will you not execute? How much longer will you stay in your cave? Woo! The other day I, I, was, I was looking at 1 Kings 19. 
And it, it was just so powerful. Matter of fact, before I was looking at First Kings 19, I was watching Superbook with my kids, with my boys. And I was watching Superbook. And I think the episode was on Elijah in a cave and like something like jumped out at me. And I was like, whoa, wait, hold up, what? And I had already prepared this message. And I was just like, oh, no, I need to go back and look at that. I need to go look at First Kings 19. And if you know the story of Elijah, this First Kings 19 is all about him escaping um, from Jezebel, right? So he had did all of this work, but now all of these good things, right? And so now Jezebel is like, she want his head. She, she want him killed. She want done to him what he has done to the prophets of Baal, right? And so on Superbook, the episode, I think it's the episode on the prophets of Baal. Um, and so literally, I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm like, wait, what? And so I started looking at 1 Kings 19 and y'all can go and read it. But as he goes out and starts ex- trying to escape from Jezebel, he finds himself in the wilderness, right? And in this wilderness, he's like literally praying that he may die in the wilderness. He's like, Lord, you know, just go ahead. I, this is too much. I, I'm, I have, I've had enough. This is literally Elijah praying. And he's like, no, this is too much. This, I have had enough with this. Lord, just go ahead and take my life because I ain't, no, just go ahead and take my life, right? What the listen, y'all? I ain't even, these scriptures don't even, aren't even in my book. I literally just titled this Arise and Speak Today. I wrote this in, at the end of September. Okay. Elijah is praying that the Lord would just go ahead and kill him and take him up because he he done. He ain't trying to die by the hand of Jezebel, right? And then listen, Elijah falls asleep, right, under the broom tree, and an angel touched him. And what did the angel tell him? Arise and eat. Arise and eat and then so of course he arrived he ate and drank and then he went to sleep again and it says the angel of the lord came back to elijah a second time and told him arise and eat again right so this is the lord literally sending an angel that's why we got to ask god to release our angels daily right to give us what we need for the journey to give us what we need so the angel is literally coming to elijah telling him to arise and to eat And he tells tells him this a second time, right? So that, why? So that he can be prepared for the journey that is ahead of him. He was like, this journey that's ahead of you is too great for you. So I need you to get some, I need you to arise. I need you to get some strength. I need you to get what you need so that you can be equipped for the journey. And so Elijah ate and drank. And then it says, it literally gave him the strength that he needed. The food that he ate gave him the the strength that he needed for the next 40 days and 40 nights, right? And so then he went into a cave, y'all. My God, I'm I'm done. I gotta be out. I gotta be out of here at the two o'clock mark at the latest. He went into a cave and he spent the night in this cave, right? And the word of the Lord came to him and Literally, the Lord says to Elijah, he said, what you doing in this case? That's the EDJ version, my version, right? What was you doing up in this case? What are you doing here? And Elijah's like, listen, I've been very zealous for you. I've been zealous for the Lord. Listen, and the children of Israel have, they out here sinning. They out here forsaking your covenant. I, I don't try to tell these people and they just being disobedient. They out here compromised. They out here lukewarm. They disobedient. They in sin. They are torn down all your altars and they out here killing your prophets with the sword. Listen, Lord, I'm the only one left. And, and not only am I the only one left, but they also trying to kill me. This is what Elijah is saying. So he up here in this cave hiding. Y'all, woo. Get to, y'all pray for me that God will give me the grace to complete the teaching on um, hiding versus being hidden. Being hidden, being hidden versus hiding. 
So Elijah's up here in this darn cave, y'all, hiding from Jezebel. And the angel comes to give him the food and telling him to arise and eat so that he can be strengthened, right? And then so God is like, why you, why you up in this cave? All the things, Elijah give him his excuse to why he is in this cave and why he is deserving to be up in this cave. And then God give Elijah this revelation. And what did he tell Elijah to do? The same thing he told Moses, the same thing he told Jeremiah, the same thing Mordecai tells Esther. God tells Elijah to go, go, G-O, go. And then he tells him, go and stand on this mountain before the Lord. And then we know that all of this stuff happened. And it was saying like, oh, the earthquake happened, but the Lord wasn't in an earthquake. And then it was saying, oh, and then there was a fire, but the Lord wasn't in the fire. This is where people talk about the Lord is, he can be in a whisper, right? It says, but he was in the still small voice. And then you hear this whole, God has him in this like revelation or this trance. And he asked him again in this still small voice, um, when he realized that Elijah is at the entrance of this cave. And so, as you know, he has to come and get out of the cave. He has to come to the edge of the, the cave for God to even reveal to him the, the voice, the still small voice. And he asked him again, what are you doing in this cage? And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord. He told him the same thing, right? And then the Lord said to him, go, return on your way. And when you arrive and he gives him these sets of instructions, and then this is what we hear of God telling him. This is when God speaks to Elijah to go and to um, basically um, anoint Elisha to basically be his replacement, right? And so this is how Elisha comes into the picture. And so going back, first King 19, is when I say how much longer will you stay in your cave? This is what I mean. How much longer will you Stay in hiding. Not because some of y'all using excuse. Oh, God has me. He's hiding me. God isn't hiding. You are in hiding because you are afraid. How much longer will you stay in your cave while the Lord passes by? It's time to go, y'all. It's time to go ye therefore. Thinking that strange that the Lord kept telling all of these powerful men and women of God to go. It's time to get up and eat so you can be strengthened for the journey of head. Imagine if Elijah would have stayed in that cave and died there. If God would have answered his prayers to kill him while he was sitting up in the wilderness. Would there be an Elisha? How many people are waiting for you to arise and go, to arise and speak so that they can come into who God has called them to be? My God, listen, y'all, listen. This is why I believe that we are in a moment, a Kairos moments, where there is an urgency literally to obey God. There's an urgency to preach the gospel. There's an urgency to make him famous. There is an urgency to do the will of the Father. Listen, we are called to be the catalyst of the miracle signs and wonders. We are called to be the catalyst of this now awakening. Right? Everybody's like, oh, when the third awakening happening? We're in the awakening now. We're living in it and we're called to be the catalyst. We are called to have a part. We are called to be the revivalist of our generation. Right? Y'all can keep, y'all, we want to keep watching all of the videos on YouTube and reading all of the books about the great revivalist. And God is literally causing us. He's literally asking for us to rise up and go so that he can use us as we obey to be the revivalist of our generation, to be the revivalist of our time. We are called to be the sent out ones who will not bow down to the gods of this world, right? That's why we gotta be consecrated. That's why we gotta implement a lifestyle of prayer and fasting. That's why we gotta be able to discern the voice of the Lord so that we can obey when he tells us to go. But we can't do that by being silent. We can't do that by being compromise we can't do that by tolerating evil we can't do that by remaining comfortable many of us have been comfortable in mediocrity and stagnation for so long that we don't even realize that we think we just chilling waiting for God to move we're waiting for the next season we're waiting for the next new year to come around to release what God has called us to release this year We've lost our hope. We've lost our confidence. We've lost our fire. We've lost our zeal. We've been in dry seasons, struggle seasons, and uncertain seasons for so long that we really have lost our belief. 
Maybe that's you today, right? You may be wondering like, man, is any of this even worth it? Maybe you believe I still got time. I'll do it next year. I'll do it. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do it this, this time. I believe that, I truly believe that there are windows of opportunity. And me and my husband talk about this all the time. And I always sense like there's windows of opportunities and the understanding of seasons and times. I believe there are windows of opportunity that we must seize while they are available. And they're really dependent upon our availability, right? When the doors are open, are you prepared? When the windows of opportunity have come, are you prepared or are you seeing God is still preparing you? Your preparation shows expectation. I, I recorded that podcast a couple months ago. Go watch it. Your preparation shows your expectation. Are you prepared for the move of God? Are you prepared for the now awakening? Are you prepared for battle? Are you prepared to be a voice in a revivalist of your generation? How are you preparing? When the doors are open, are you willing to be used for the master's use? God isn't going to force your hand. Mordecai, can you force Esther's hand? Listen, you got to be willing or deliverance and relief will arise from some other place. And again, lastly, are you available or are you too busy with the cares of life? Are you too focused on your job? Oh, my job. A lot of us, our job has taken us away from, from obedience. Not only obedience, because we're so focused on our job and we're so focused on getting a check and we're so focused on doing all of these things with the cares of life that we don't even get in our word no more. We don't read the Bible no more. We don't have a prayer life. Don't, don't even talk about fasting. Some of us are like, oh, I don't like that fasting word. I'll pray. I might read my Bible, but I ain't fasting. We've become too busy with the cares of life. We don't understand the benefits of, the, of these spiritual principles. Our careers have become our number one priority. Hanging out with our friends and traveling have become our number one priority. Have you been distracted by television? Have you been distracted by social media? Has that become your priority? That you miss the opportunities of God because you're distracted? Listen, y'all, there is a shift that has happened. It's already happened. It's not happening any longer. The shift is here. The shift has happened in the spirit. And another window of opportunity has now come. What has God been telling you to do that you've been putting on hold, that you've been procrastinating on? Is it a book? Did he tell you to write a book? Did he tell you to start a business? Did he tell you to quit your job? Did he tell you to go and do a podcast? Did he tell you to go and reach out to a certain person? Did he tell you to start a community? What has he told you to do? Did he tell you to go and do overseas missions? Or are you waiting for, oh, I'm going to wait till this, after this happened, then I'm going to be able to go. How are you going to tell God, Lord, well, just wait for me? Just wait for me, Lord. Wait till I finish paying off this debt. Wait, wait till I finish. Wait till I finish um, um, this, this cycle of school. I'm going to teach for 10 years and then, Lord, I'm going to come out and do what you tell me to do. How much longer will you be distracted? How much longer would you continue to be in procrastination? In what areas, ask yourself this, in what area have you been feeling a pull or a lack of motivation or inability due to the availability of resources? Ask yourself that. What plans have you decided not to move forward with because, oh, I'll just do that next year. I'll make that a part of my New Year's resolution. Oh, I'm going to do that on my birthday. I'm going to do that when my kids get a little older. Stop using your kids as an excuse to disobey God. And ask God, what is he calling you to do in this season, right? Because he's told everybody else to go, where is he calling you to go? Do you know your purpose? Do you know God's purpose for your life? Do you know what he has called you to? Who is staying oppressed because of your lack of urgency? Who is staying oppressed because of your disobedience? And then I ask you these questions. I've had them on the screen for a reason. Will you say yes again? Will you say yes to God again? 
Because many of us, we've said yes so many times that now our yes don't even mean nothing. Because we said yes, but we didn't do. We said yes, but we didn't go. We said yes, but we didn't speak. We said yes, but we've done nothing. Will you say yes to God again and mean it this time? Will you say, here am I, Lord, send me. If nobody else is available, Lord, you can use me. Have you availed yourself to God? He's calling you, but are you available or are you distracted with the cares of this world? He's calling you, but you're like, Lord, I work and I ain't got time to, I can't do this because I have a job. Right? Literally, just think of all the times or the disciples in the Bible when he told them to follow him. They were like, oh, can I, I need to go back. My, my so-and-so just died. I need to bury them. And let the dead bury the dead, he said. This is the Lord. This is Jesus. Dead buried the dead. But we out here trying to think of all different excuses to why we can't follow right now, why we can't obey right now. But I digress. This is well over two hours and I just don't understand. And so, amen, amen, amen. So I hope this blessed you. I hope this has reignited your fire um, if it has been quenched. Um, for any reason, I pray that this message has been a um, encouragement to us. I pray that this message has you really um, thinking about what God, what is your time or, or if this is your time or season. Um, and if so, I encourage you to continue to pray into this word, that you will continue to study the scriptures, that you will go and read the books of Esther, read the story of Moses, read the story of Jeremiah, or read the book of Jeremiah, and then also read First Kings. Oh, First, First Kings is really like a gem. Go and read First Kings, Second Kings. They're powerful stories of even kings when God was calling kings, and they all had an excuse. Like, Lord, do you know? Do you know what family line I can't listen? I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping up. I'm wrapping up. Amen. Amen. So thank you all so much for joining me for technically the Unveiling Women's Life group for the month of October. Um, and so if this has blessed you all, this is what we do. This is a part of what we do at Life Group. Um, um, of course, at Life Group, we kind of open it up to see if anyone have questions or, you know, comments or their own input and all of those things. And so the next Life Group is happening in November, November 2nd, 2022 at 7.22 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 6.22 um, Central Standard Time um, for all of my people who have who live in Central Standard Time Zone. I want to invite you all to the Unveiling Women Life Group, y'all. If y'all are looking to break off limiting beliefs, if y'all are looking to dismantle condemnation and shame, if y'all are looking to rediscover your identity as a daughter, if you're looking to stand on the promises of God, if you're looking to recover all the enemy has stolen, and if you're looking to get your voice back, join us, y'all. We are just a community of women who are sharpening one another. We are a community of women who are on fire of for God, we are a community of women who are saying, Lord, send me, Lord, I'll go, Lord, yes. And so I invite you all to join us. And then also I invite you all to take a listen to the Girl Get Your Voice Back podcast. Um, I'm actually going to, if I can, I'm going to actually put this audio on there as well to be the next episode because it's so good. So you can listen to it throughout your day or over the course of the weekend that's coming up. Um, it's the Girl Get Your Voice Back podcast is available on all podcast platforms as well as YouTube. And um, God has literally been um, just speaking so much. And I want to share it with you all so that you literally can raise up and get your voice back and evolve into all who God has called you to be. Um, and so, yes, thank you so much for watching. Of course, Ebony D. James ministry is all about helping women to overcome condemnation and shame and guilt um, for whatever reason by standing on the promises of God and coupling faith with action so that they can walk into their God-given purpose or God-given mandate fearlessly and strategically. And so um, I pray this word falls on good ground and that you literally use it um, and, and, and literally pray into it and literally ask God to speak to you and to show you and to reveal to you what you are called to do in this season. And if this is your season, be sure to go and also watch um, 
uh, Mama Lee's video on Facebook so you can hear the other side of this. Um, and yes, I pray that it is a blessing to you. Um, if it has blessed you, be sure to share. Be sure to um, sign up for the life group to get the Zoom link. Um, all you have to do is go to ebonydjames.com slash life group and um, you will be able to sign up and receive an email immediately upon sign up with the link for the next life group. The link is always the same for each one. Um, feel free to DM me with questions or comment um, in the YouTube video link with all of your questions you have, any of your comments and suggestions and all of the things. And I look forward to talking to you all next month. Bye.